Well, it's confession time. Okay, so when we started doing this earth battery system, this project, I have to admit we were in a bit of a hurry because by the time our son Isaac got this grant, in order to meet all the dates that we had to do, uh, in order to get seeds in and hopefully have them uh, to market by the end of April, beginning of May as vegetable plants, we really had to speed things up. So I will say we did what I feel like was a fair amount of research on earth batteries. But I must confess that we still jumped into this a bit half-baked uh, with enough information to be dangerous. And so when we uploaded this video about installing the earth battery, one of the commenters said that the, the pipe going in and the manifold pipe that all of the four inch pipes were connected to was too small. We exchanged a couple of comments and I have to say, this is one of the things I really love about YouTube is a bit of a community where you do upload something like this. People will look at it and add comments or suggestions or feedback. So um, humility is endless. And it just was one of those things that her comments stuck in my head and kept turning over and over. So I did more and more research and the bottom line is she's right, uh, absolutely. Uh, the pipe going in and the manifold does have to be bigger. This is especially true because the fans that we're going to be getting, the outlet is six inches and it's going to generate well over 400 cubic feet of air movement a minute in a very high efficiency fan. So these are DC motors pushing a lot of air. So at really low cost, but the problem is, is that if you've got a six inch outlet on the fan and you reduce that to a four inch, well then you've just reduced the cubic feet per minute. You're creating positive pressure or back pressure on the fan, which is gonna shorten the life of the fan, unfortunately. And I did call the company to ask them about this. And they said, absolutely it would. Uh, and so you're gonna pay more money for a fan that's pushing a lot of air, but you're not gonna get that amount of movement because you're constricting it and you're gonna shorten the life of the fan. So you have to have a six inch duct running down all the way to the manifold or as the manifold and then off of it, the four inch pipes uh, running underneath the, the greenhouse. And so, I mean, just to help you understand this, the, the area of a four inch circle is about 12 and a half inches. The area of a six inch circle, believe it or not, is over, tw is over twice the size, a 20, little over 28 square inches so you have a much larger area to push air through and down into the pipes now once they get down there you're taking each of those four inch pipes multiply by six and you know now we have 72 cubic inches of for air to move through so there's no constriction and then on the other end you have to have a, tw a six inch manifold as well for the exhaust coming back up. A source to go to is ecosystemsdesign.com. They have got really incredible information, an FAQ page on their website that talks about all this. Something I just didn't see, didn't find when we first started putting this in, but have since found and really I'm indebted to them because they have put together a lot of great information for people. When we started editing the video that we shot yesterday to put this video together just realized that it didn't really explain the earth battery system and how exactly the fans the manifolds and the tubes all go together and what the math is on that to make it work and why we what we had done before wouldn't work so i'm not exactly sure how i'm going to splice this in to that footage but i'll figure it out so here's the thing our greenhouse when it's all said and done is going to be 6144 cubic feet that's the volume of the greenhouse now most of the websites things that i'm reading or have read say that you need for an earth battery system to turn that volume of air over five times every hour at least so and again I'm not exactly sure where people come up with that number or why it's five, not four, not six. 
Um, but most folks seem to land on five as the magic number. Although again, at uh, ecosystems design, they said that it's you know over five and then there's some evidence that the ability to turn it over more than that could have some benefit. And especially in the summer, if you're using this system to actually cool the greenhouse, you might want to turn it over as many as 20 times an hour. That's what it says on their website. Okay, so when we had just four inch pipes before and the inability to use six inch pipes, right? So if everybody's saying six inch pipe going to, a, I mean, six inch fan going to a four inch pipe is a problem for a number of reasons, as I said, um, then we were limited to four inch fans with four inch ducts and the most energy efficient highest cfm fan that i could find was only going to push 170 cfm so we have two layers so we're going to put in two fans but if you do the math on that 170 cubic feet a minute times two uh, times 60 for 60 minutes we're going to come up way short of five times turning the volume of air over in the greenhouse okay so if we buy a six inch fan this fan that we are going to get it will push 483 cubic feet a minute so with two of those if you do the math you know the 483 uh, times two times 60 we end up with something like 58,000 cubic feet um, a minute and then divide that by the area of uh, the volume of the greenhouse 6144 and we end up turning over the air potentially if we're running the fans wide open we could turn them over almost nine times or right at nine times an hour and we could of course throttle those down i mean with a, a rheostat or a fan control variable speed fan controller we could take it down to five but we could go up higher so I hope that better explains what needs to happen, the combination of all of the mathematics of the volume of the greenhouse and how many times you need to turn it over relates to how many cubic feet a minute your fan must push. Uh, and then of course, then that affects the diameter of the tubes going down into the manifolds and across. So. Again, I just I realized that I didn't really explain that well in the videos that we shot yesterday. I just wanted to take the time, shoot this video, and hopefully get it uploaded Monday. So this is what we had to do, was dig four feet down uh, at the end of this, tear off the pipes that we had on there previously, and then replace them with the six inch pipe going down and back up. So we went and got a five inch hole saw at Lowe's to cut holes in the six inch pipe. Now, the drainage pipes are four and three quarters inches in diameter and you can get hole saws four and three quarters, but you have to special order them. They do not have them at Lowe's. Because we were, which I would recommend if you're gonna do this and you're gonna be drilling a lot of these. Uh, but uh, we were, again, in a hurry to get this done. So we got a five inch hole and then just bought tape and wrapped duct tape around the ends of the pipes until we got it up to about five inches and got it snug fit in there. And then we drilled a hole into the top of the PVC right above where the drainage is to secure it with a screw. So we went down, just drilled a hole big enough, larger than the screw so that it would easily go down. And then we screwed down uh, and pulled the pipe, the drainage pipe in there tightly so that the, the pipe won't come off of it. And then we took some extra duct tape and just put it around the top edge that so we're putting dirt down in there. But it's, it's perforated pipe, so it doesn't have to be an airtight fit. I mean, if some air is escaping, it's fine. And again, when you're pushing air down there, you've got positive pressure. So dirt and stuff like that is not gonna be falling into the pipe because you've got airflow in there. Uh, almost constantly pushing anything or keeping anything from going into it. Um, one other thing is in the last video, I kind of dumbly talked about putting in a clean out on the riser so that you could drop a hose down in there if you ever had to, to pull water out. That's not necessary because on the port side, on the exhaust side of the system, 
it's an open end. So you can just stick a hose down in that end, down to the bottom and pull water out, pump water out if you had to. Now I wanna just show you real quick uh, the difference. I mean, this thing, we're just using a leaf blower, which is running about 270, I think it's 270 cubic feet a minute of air that it's pushing through a fairly small hole. Um, we're gonna run that thing wide open, take a temperature reading of the inlet temperature of the air going in, and then test the air, the temperature of the air coming out. So you get a sense of what, how effective this thing works. And this isn't even fully installed, uh, fully functioning. So let's take a look at that real quick. All right, this is loud, because we're running next to the leaf blower, but I wanted to show you what the inlet temperature is. Now, this is gonna be hotter, because it's pushing exhaust air down in as well, but check this out. All right, so you get the idea, it's 114 degrees and it was climbing a little bit going in. Let's go let's see what it is at the outlet. Okay, so this is the outlet side. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this. Isaac, if you can get the camera down on here. This is just temporary. So this is not the full system, but you can see it's dropping the temperature down to 35 degrees in the outlet, and that's running at about half the cubic feet per minute as what our fans will be doing. Okay, well, even though this system is not completely functioning, um, you can see this thing really works. I mean, it's gonna work really quite effectively in the greenhouse when we get it all said and done. So uh, this is gonna, of course, push us back a little bit on getting it the, the whole thing completed because now we get to go dig out the other end and replace the pipes down there and redo all that before we can finish all this. We did get the single uh, spring lock bases. We're still missing the double spring lock bases. So uh, that's, a, that's been a bit of a challenge trying to get those. So those we're still missing those, the company hasn't sent them. And those are the ones we really need because they're gonna hold the main film all the whole length of the greenhouse goes into the double channel locks on the end. So we really need those before we can put the film up. But we did get a door in, so that's pretty exciting. One door is up. Uh, and then once we get the other end wall, we'll get that done. Okay, that is it. And uh, we're getting ready to head into Easter weekend. So don't know how much we'll get done. We may get some stuff. Try and get this video uploaded on Easter Monday. And then until the next video from here, St. Isidore's Farm, hope everyone is well. Uh, happy Easter to all. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. Take care.